Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear students and uh, dear viewers, um, welcome to this investment analysis and portfolio management lecture under the SWAM lecture series. And as you know my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur uh, in India. So a very warm welcome, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, whether in India or any part of the globe and at whatever time you are watching this lectures. Today is basically the 12th lecture under the SWAM lecture series the title being investment analysis and portfolio management. So if you remember in the last class we were and if I go back to the last and as, as well as the last to last class we had considered that we were able to find out the returns of the investment capital RI or small RI based on the fact that we consider the returns uh, to be uh, related to the co-movement of the market and based on which we had the single index model and the single index model was based on the simple statistical formulation of the linear regression where the assumptions under the linear regression exactly matched with that with the single index model and uh, the simple linear regression was exactly equal to y is equal to mx plus c the concept. Then we slowly derived in the sense what was the return, what was the risk for the single index model considering the returns of the stocks. Then we formulated how the portfolio would be formed, how the portfolio risk would be calculated, how the portfolio returns will be calculated. Then fleetingly, even though fleetingly, I will come back to the details later on, fleetingly I did mention that rather than taking the risk which is the standard deviation of the or the variance, we could also consider the risk as the beta. Then we went into the multi index model when the main idea was rather than the market as the index we have we can consider different set of variables like the interest rate, the Brent crude prices, the gold prices and so on and so forth with the idea that the multi index model would be able to give us a better prediction of the prices of the, not the prices the returns of the, of the scripts capital RI or small RI and uh, though I did not mention but it would be important and interesting to note that what we are aiming in the multi index model with respect to the single index model was basically the adjusted R square or the R square the main component in the multiple in uh, linear regression model is as high as possible that means we are able to predict the forecast to the maximum possible extent. Forecast means the returns. Then again we took a, a, a step backward and considering the overall idea was to formulate the efficient frontier. If you remember we have form, formulated the efficient frontier based on the maximizing of the return, minimizing of the risk, Lagrangian concept and so on and so forth. And later on we consider the four different combinations that short selling being allowed and not allowed as well as riskless lending being allowed and not allowed plus the other constraints. Now we will again move in the same direction that considering that we have been able to formulate the problem in the single index model, the, it can also be done for the multi index model considering it is the single index model we will be able to formulate the efficient frontier in the sense that we will be able to formulate the efficient portfolio one point in the risk return framework. 
Now in the last class we, we did discuss that considering short selling not been there and um, riskless lending borrowing being there, we would formulate the portfolio in, in, in two different formats. One was with the excess return of the return of the port uh, the index over and above the risk free interest rate divided by either sigma or beta. Why I am saying sigma and beta? These are the best measure of the risk. So, considering Ri minus Rf divided by beta which is basically a sort of efficiency, it is basically greater than C star. So, if it is positive they will be considered in the portfolio in the positive sense and if short selling is not allowed if the value of Ri minus Rf divided by beta is less than C star they would not be considered. So, we have considered that model in all the details. I did discuss when we had uh, the solving the problem that there would be a particular value of C star and how we find it out you can go back to the lecture 11th and you find out the details. Now we will consider the same idea but with two different flavors. The first flavor being that where short selling is allowed in the normal definition and then we will consider short selling is allowed in the Lindner's definition and if you remember the Lindner's definition basically partitioned the whole amount of money or the funds which you had for short selling into two, two different components. One was where you want to do short selling but considering there would be a risk for the other party you have to have a collateral. So, we will consider both of them accordingly. So, the lecture 12 basically will consider investment analysis and portfolio management that is basically the topic. It is it falls under the portfolio theory and we are continuing discussing that even though it is a very broad topic I did not divide into subtitles, but we will keep considering that portfolio with the main bullet points which we consider for each and every lecture. So, what are the bullet points? We will formulate or consider the lecture description in details we will formulate the portfolio with the idea that so I will highlight it that short selling being allowed in the normal definition and riskless lending borrowing being possible which is the first one and the second idea would be we will consider as we continue the discussion would be short selling being allowed the Lindner definition as well as riskless lending borrowing is possible. And there are other topics under this uh, lecture, hope I am able to cover that in case not I will basically um, uh, carry it forward to the 13th and the 14th lecture. There would be the consideration of the, the idea related to kappa model which basically emanates from the single index model, the simple concept of linear regression where market is the main index based on which you find out the returns, returns being capital Ri or small Ri. Then we will also consider that under the kappa model what are, uh, what are the assumptions and when you consider the assumptions you will find out very subtly that they do agree with the single index model which is here and they also do agree with this simple linear regression. So, SIM is the single index model, SLR is the simple linear regression and considering that we will consider the capital market or the pricing line. It is all coming out from the CAPM model, the security market line there would be other measures of risk we will consider as the Jensen's index and how it is different with respect to sigma or beta we will consider that. We will also consider so this is J Jensen's index we will also consider sharp index how is different with J how is different with sigma how it is di different with beta we will also consider that. But while solving the problems I would not be mentioning those assumptions repeatedly. I will mention them very subtly when you consider the assumptions. 
we will consider the risk adjusted interest rate, the linearity of pricing and the certainty equivalent form. So, hopefully, hopefully I will be able to cover all these in the 12th lecture, if not it will flow over into the 13th one and so on and so forth. So, first let us consider in all its details the first bullet point where it is short selling is allowed normal uh, definition along with RF or small RF whatever it is and the second point being SS being allowed in the Lindner's definition along with RF being considered where rather than capital RF we can also consider the small RF. So, we start the, the, the discussion in all the earnestness and the details. The problem has the condition two main one being short selling being allowed the normal definition which we have mentioned that means the weights are not this is not applicable not between 0 and 1 they are unbounded because some of the weights can be negative also. But obviously, at the end of the day, we will ensure the weights as equal to 1. And riskless lending borrowing capital RF or small RF is allowed, which means that if you are formulating the portfolio, I am sure all of you are well aware of that. You have picked up the concept very nicely, but when I mean RF and capital RF or small RF, actually I mean there is a value such that when I formulate the portfolio, so considering the overall combination, I need to find out the value of Q such that any point between uh, the RF value and the Q value would basically give you the idea that there is no short selling and after Q as I am drawing it as a hashed line it will mean that there is short selling. I have said that, but I am still repeating please bear with me. The rule actually follows as possible. I have discussed the rule time and again in the 11th lecture, but I will still repeat that and then follow the discussion of the same problem in the same way, but highlighting the fact that how this rule when you consider the short selling to be there in the normal definition is different from the case when you have no short selling as we have discussed in the 11th lecture. The rule works as follows, we need to find out the excess return to beta ratio that means R i minus R f divided by beta. Why beta? Because we are considering beta as a form of risk and replacing sigma in uh, with beta. So, they are basically a proxy of the risk. When I consider the excess return with respect to R f divided by beta is basically a sort of efficiency R i minus R f divided by beta. So, you find out the excess return to beta ratio for each and every stock and we rank from the highest to the lowest because the numerator is basically the positive thing and denominator is the risk which we consider as a negative thing. So, we will consider the ratios as follows the R i minus R f divided by beta should be greater than C star and the concept of C star is exactly the same what we have considered but the value may change why the value may change I will come to that later because when you consider the concept of short selling uh, let me use the other color so it will be clear when short selling being there and short selling not being there the value of C star in this case is conceptually the methodology of calculation is same but the values would be different. Why different? I will come to that and, and to give a hint if you remember in the 11th lecture I kept mentioning that you sum up from j is equal to 1 to i and the i changes from step to step. 
that was for the case when short selling was not allowed. When you consider short selling, you will again formul formulate in the same formulation, j will be 1 till the value of i, i is not now changing, it is fixed and that will depend on the overall size of the portfolio you are considering. What I do mean, um, mean by that, I will come to that within few minutes. So, if I consider the stocks would be invested in the positive sense. So, R i minus R f technically it can also be written as R i bar minus R f divided by beta i is greater than C star you will invest. So, I put a tick mark here and if R i bar minus R f divided by sigma is less than equal to C star, you will still invest, yes, you, you will because short selling is allowed, but in the sense that the weights would be negative and we will follow the same concept that the uh, sum of the normalized weights should add up to 1 as the case should be because you are formulating the prob problem keeping in mind that the weights should add up to 1. So, again the same problem, so I am glad the overall layout is clear to all of you. So, I have the following information, I have i in the first column again 1 to 10 and based on how you rank them I will come to that later, the same concept which I have discussed in the 11th lecture. You have r i, the third column is r i minus r f, why r f because that is the excess return and coming back to the fact that R f is equal to 5 percent or 5. Then you have the values corresponding to beta. So, in place of beta you can, could also have sigma. I, I do mention that the concept of when you use the risk as a beta or a sigma, the idea of formulating the problem is the same. So, I would be mentioning it time and again. The fifth column is sigma square epsilon which is the error of the white noise and the main important fact based on which you will doing the ranking which I am circling is excess return with respect to beta. So, when you see the ranking and you rank them it is based on excess return by beta. So, in the table which you see is the seventh slide it has already been considered that you are ranking them based on the excess return over R, R f divided by beta. And as you are discussing in the next slide we will also consider the concept of the market risk and just for your information the market risk which I am highlighting in red is given by 10 percent which is given here. So, even though I mentioned as percentage let us take the values of 5 and 10 for R f and sigma square m and solve the problem. So, we will just replicate the slide which is given here with the main information being we will consider for the time being the first column and the last column with the first column being the i values and the last column being the excess return with respect to beta. So, here it is if I consider the excess return to beta and the stock number the first column where I put a first tick mark and the second column where I put the two tick marks actually these are the values. So, actually they are being ranked by the excess return to the beta starting from 10 to 1. So, 10, 8, 7, 6, 6 they can be more than one such stocks where the excess return to beta can be of the same value and it also can be just let me mention that R i minus R f divided by beta for all the stocks are the same. Then when you rank it does not matter in what sequence you, you uh, rank them because the overall portfolio you will form would exactly be coming out to be the same irrespective of the ranking process which you follow. So, I have excess return to beta rank them in the second column and the first column correspondingly are the the i number which is the stock number. Then we follow the same concept as we have done in the 11th lecture. 
I find out Ri minus Rf divided by sigma square into beta for each every stock. So, it is 2 by 10. I have kept purposefully the denominator as 10. Why you will understand? I did not mention it when we are doing the 11th lecture, but now I will mention it more details. It would have been evident when we are when I was discussing 11th lecture and I will make it more clear here. So, without repeating the denominators, the values are 2, 4.5, 3.5, so on and so forth till 0 0.6. Beta square divided by sigma square, again I am not mentioning the denominator because the denominators are all, all 100. Purposefully, I have done that such that it will be easier for me to explain and easy for you to understand and add them up. They start from a value of 2 till 6. So, this third column which I am marking blue, 1 tick and the fourth column which I am marking blue in, the, in 2 ticks, they are based on the fact that once you have basically ranked the second column which is the excess return with respect to the beta. Now, considering the third and the fourth, I need to add them up, same formula as we have done in the case when short selling was not allowed, but with a subtle and very important difference. The conceptually when I mean short selling not allowed, I will only consider those stocks where the excess return to beta is positive, others I would not never consider. But when I am considering short selling to, with respect to uh, is there, then finding out the excess return with the, to, to the beta, I will consider those stocks in the positive sense if that, that excess over C star is positive and if they are negative, I will consider them as uh, uh, as short selling being allowed, which means that at one go, I will consider all of these stocks to be there in the portfolio. So, which is a very important concept. When I consider that all the stocks are there, which means when I do the summation, which is there in the fifth column, this one as well and the last column, this one. If you remember, in both the cases, when short selling was not allowed, there the j values was from 1 to i. So, i was 2, j is equal to 1 to 2, i is equal to 4, j is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. But now the summation would be done from j is equal to 1 till n for the whole set of stocks. So, that is why it is j is equal to 1 to uh, n. So, when I add them up, very intuitively the values will all come out to be same. That means, the fifth column which is basically the excess return with respect to the, the white noise risk multiplied by the risk of the particular port uh, the script, all the values come out to be 44.1 divided by 10. So, if you see here, which I am marking in light green, these are the values all are same because the sum is from j is equal to 1 to n, not j is equal to 1 to i. It is always j, I am using the bold, but please remember that is j is equal to 1 to n. This will be applicable here and when I formulate and find it out for the last column which is beta square by sigma square again the values are 87.63 divided by 100, I, I, I did not mention 100 which is in the denominator. Now, in this discussion you will be, you will be asking yourself that well in the other problem which you have solved when short selling was not there, we did get a value of C star. So, what happens to that? So, C star is the main fact based on which we are ranked. So, does the C star value change? And if so, how it is utilized based on the fact that the excess return to the beta is greater than C star, we add them in the positive sense that is no short selling and is less than C star, we add them in the negative sense that there is short selling. Yes, that would be considered. Now, I formulate the problem of C i, same formulation but with the difference where the difference is I will formulate and, and let you know. So, C i is equal to sigma square m by summation 1 to n r i minus r f divided by sigma square into beta and in the denominator we have 1 plus sigma square m 
summation i is equal to 1 to n beta square by sigma square. The main difference is here. So, if you remember in the case when short selling was not there, I am putting a x mark not there, then the summation was basically j is equal to 1 to i, but in the case when short selling is there, the summation is equal to i is equal to 1 to n, this is what is given here. So, that is why if you pay attention to the values, all of them come out to be the same which is 4.52. So, now the question would be what value of c star do we consider considering that the overall sum is 4.52. Now, this is what I am mentioning. Now, there is no c star which is maximum. If you remember for the values of c i, as you keep adding up the values j is equal to 1 to i, you had a set of values of c i which kept increasing and then decreased. So, we took the value of c star accordingly. But in this case, as you add up j is equal to 1 to n, hence there is no c star, which is maximum. As we are considering all the assets due to the fact that we are considering the short selling, hence we have only one value of c i which will be considered as c star. Hence, any asset for which the value of r i minus r f r i bar minus r f divided by sigma beta i is greater than value of c star which is given as constant. If it is true, it will be included, will be included, I am marking it here. And for those scripts where it is negative, they would be in included definitely, but considering short selling. That means, the weights which I mentioned for the case when they are positive, it will be positive which I put and in case they are less than c star, they will be put in the negative sense and it will become clear to you within few minutes. So, there is no c star which is maximum, we are considering all the assets due to the fact short selling is there. Hence, we have only one value of c i which is basically c star, which for our convenience we considered as c i or c star wherever it is. If the concept of this holds r i minus r f divided by beta is greater than c star, the weights are positive. And if this is negative less than c star or c i, we will consider short selling to be there and the w i is to be negative. But remember always for both these cases, we will always ensure weights as 1 considering the normalized weights. I will come to that. Remember one point, the summation which you are doing, which I have mentioned, but I am still mentioning it, please bear with me. The summation which you have mentioned here or the summation which you have mentioned here, they are based on the fact that j is equal to 1 to n, which is important, not equal to I, I was the fact to watch level or number of stocks which you took. So, correspondingly W i's will be given by the excess return to C star positive or negative multiplied by beta divided by sigma square i and C star as you know has already been done. Just for information again I am repeating maybe uh, to the fact that I am I, I am repeating too much but this is important. To n, this is to n. 
that means it should be remembered that if this n is not equal to i as we have done in the case when short selling was not allowed. The n here means the whole set of assets given to you hence in this example it is 10 in that case it change, changed like i is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 so on and so forth here n is fixed and n. Now when we put in the formula the value of w i is given again based on the fact that the summation i or j is equal to would always be from 1 to n and similarly for this case. Once you have that the non normalized weights add up to this find out this. So, if you add up very interestingly the summation of the non normalized weights are not equal to 1. So, when you want to find out the value of w star. So, you basically find out as like this w i divided by summation of w i for i is equal to 1 to n. So, n remains the same because short selling is allowed once you find out they are given like this. So, I should highlight it with a different color I am just hashing it. So, it means that in the first talk you have 615 that means you are using the excess fund in order to buy more of this stock. So, the second one is 733 percent, third is 696, fourth is 1664, fifth is 208 they are given in decimals and I am cons considering them in the percentage sense while starting from the 6th to the 10th they are all negative and the negative values are I am only talking about the decimals it is not the percentage it is minus 1.45 minus 4.25 minus 5.66 minus 7.06 minus 19.74 which means I will be utilizing the fund considering short selling is there for the set of stocks which is from the 6th to the 10th and utilizing this fund in order to increase my proportion of investment for the set of stocks which is from 1 to 5. So, obviously it will mean that I am borrowing too much for the last stock and obviously a question will be raised and if you consider that concept being subsumed under Linton's definition which is valid I will come to that later on. Very interestingly if you add up the normalized weights they should add up to 1 as the case should be because the total amount of money which you have borrowed and investment basically that should add up to 1 which is the total amount which you have. So, starting from plus 6.15 plus 7.33 plus 6.96 plus 16.64 plus 2.08 I am not talking about the third fourth fifth decimal let us leave it. So, continue let me continue reading it plus 2.08 minus 1.45 minus 4.25 minus 5.66 minus 7.06 minus 19.774 you add up they will exactly come out to be 1. And when I said that I am not reading the fourth uh, the third fourth fifth decimal consider that if I do it will be more exact in your calculation. Now, let us change the environment of the consideration from the mathematical point of view not from the practical point of view practical let us say that uh, the conceptually the problem solving would remain the same, but subtly we will change some definition what is that let me come to that before we start the problem. If you remember we had mentioned about the Lintner's definition where you have some funds and that was basically proportioned into buying that particular stock plus keeping a collateral because there may be risk for the other party. And we have seen that technically as per the Linton's definition we should have these the mod of the weight should add up to 1 the normalized weights I will come to that later and why because it can be proved according to Linton's work that we are considering the weights itself in such a way that you are apportioning your money for the short selling as a um, 
security for the other party from whom we are taking the money and investing and trying to basically apportion your money accordingly. So, here Lindner's definition is allowed as per short selling and restless modding and lending is allowed as usual that means RF or small RF is allowed and short selling being allowed. So, does it mean that your overall calculation will change? No. What we need to understand is the last stages of the problem when you find out the weights that will change conceptually based on the fact that you have the sum of the mod of the weights as 1. It is basically the normalized weights. The rule follow, works as follows. Find the excess return to the beta ratio exactly the same R i minus R f divided by beta or R i minus R f divided by sigma. I am mentioning sigma if you see I have been mentioning about divided by sigma time and again why I will come to that later because two things number one sigma and beta are both a different form of risk which you want to utilize to find out about the risk of the asset point one and point two it will make us conceptually much better aware that rather than beta what if we use sigma as the risk can we solve the problem yes we can and third point is when we solve the problem concerning the beta in the denominator when we solve the problem concerning sigma in the denominator where sigma or beta are the risk measures would we get the same level of, of conceptualization of the, the weights for the portfolio whether short selling is there whether short selling is not there whether short selling is there with the Lindner the definition my answer would be yes you would maybe the weights are different but the conceptually the how you formulate the prob problem in both the cases where excess return by beta excess return by sigma considering short selling not there short selling there short selling with the Lindner's definition all would lead to the same conceptual idea how you formulate the portfolio and when you are, when I am saying the portfolio it is basically you are finding out the weights because at the end of the day it is basically the normalized weights which you are trying to find out. So, now the optimal idea again remains the same excess return by beta greater than c star if it is true then you add them in the positive sense and if I find out it is not true in the short selling sense if it is negative they will be considered in the negative sense that means you will be borrowing some money and investing in the stocks. So, the answer would be you would be thinking that well the weight should come out to be as we have found out in the case of excess return to beta and short selling to be there. So, values like minus 16.45 plus 7.36 yes they will be positive they will be negative but the values would be much more practical in the sense because 16.65 7.63 means a huge amount of money being transferred from the short selling to the non short selling one on the long position which may be not risky for you may be risky for the other person who is basically uh, the other party based on who whose transaction you are short selling. So, the problem again the same thing same idea I will repeat and sorry if I am uh, I am I am repeating it time and again you have the idea that you have the risk free interest rate 5 percent sigma square m as the market is as 10 percent 5 and 10 are the important fact percentage leave that we, you have the index number i return x in the return r i x is written r i minus r f the value of beta value of sigma value of x is return I kept mentioning the same breadth because they are exactly the same what we have considered only fact being that I am ranking them based on R i minus R f by beta. So, that means starting from value of 10 to 1. So, whatever combination you are given of the i values at the end of the day when you start the problem rank them based on x is return to beta or x is return to sigma. So, I am mentioning sigma because that can also be considered as a ranking measure here you consider as beta. 
So once you have done that, we will come back and utilize the first column and the last column which I put tick marked in light orange and we will utilize that for the next slide which is the 18th slide. So, this is i, this is x return with respect to beta. So, I have x s return divided by sigma square into beta, beta square by sigma and then I add up. So, the second last column and the last column I am marking in green. So, they are the summation, but again important fact the summations are all from j is equal to 1 to n as it should be considering the case short selling is there. So, the values if we see here which are marked in green column and again I mark the last column in green they are exactly the same 44.1 divided by 10 always 86.863 always. So, you will be thinking well if this is the case that should lead us to the same answer yes it should be, but at the end stage there would be a difference I will come to that. Again, the C i values or there is no such C star, they are C i. So, the C i values is basically 4.52 as it is for the case what we have already considered. So, rather than finding out C star, I am finding out R i minus R f divided by beta, it is greater than C star which is now given by the fact it is C i and all the C i values are given. And I am basically summing up as I mentioned from j is equal to 1 to n, n being the total number of assets which is 10 in number. There in the case where you had no short selling you found, found out you are summing up from j is equal to 1 to i and i value was basically 5 because that was the basically C star value. So, the idea remains the same, there is no C star which is maximum, we are considering all the assets due to the fact that short selling is allowed, hence we have only one value of C star which is 4.52. For any asset if this is true R i minus R f divided by beta is greater than C star, you add them in the positive sense. And if you see R i minus R f divided by beta is less than C star, you add them in the negative sense. Till now, same concept, but then Linton's definition will come at the last stage. So, one important fact, sorry if I am repeating, the summation is being done for all the values provided is i is equal to 1 to n. If this is too dark, let me remove it. So, here the sum is being done from j is equal to n i n. So, all the j values you will consider each and every step there is no i you are not going step by step at one go you are going to consider all the number of different assets which are there in the portfolio. So, if you consider this i is equal to 1 to n or i is equal to 1 to n in both the numerator and the denominator technically i is j as per the fact in the earlier problem solving when you consider short selling to be not there. So, n is basically 10. So, once you have that you can find out w i. So, this is the formula same formula there is no change here x is return multiplied by beta i multiplied by divided by sigma square beta is the risk and sigma square is the overall white noise variance. C star again same formula exactly, same concept exactly with repetition I am saying that you are adding up the sums of i is equal to 1 to n, technically this is j is equal to 1 to n. So, n is basically the number which you have 10 here. Here n means the whole set of stocks given here. Now, once you formulate the problem with the based on the fact that this formula is given in the first column I write i, in the second column I write the non normalized weights and the third column I write the normalized weights. Using the same formula 
of the weights as given here in the same formula concept exactly remains the same as short selling allowed, short selling not allowed only the fact j is equal to 1 to n and j is equal to 1 to i. For the first case j is equal to 1 to 1 to n for the case when short selling allowed normal definition, Linton's definition and for the case when short selling is not allowed j is equal to 1 to i till the step which you are considering the asset. So, once you consider these are the values and here it what I want to highlight. So, this one values are point I will just read the first three decimals 0 0.106 without calling the decimals 130, 124, 296 and so on and so forth. So, let us consider 106, 130. So, let me go back. So, this is 109, 130, 124. So, this is 109, 1, 124 and so on and so forth. Now, as they are converted to the non non weight, very interesting thing applies. So, if you remember, let me highlight it here. These values, if you see, when you solve the problem, I will come to that. The weights have technically overall change drastically. So, if I check the weights. So, this is 7.9, 9.4 in the percent sense, 9 percent, 21.5, 2.6 minus till minus 1.8 till minus 25.5. The minus values continues to remain the same from the 6th to the 10th, but the values have changed drastically. Again, if you add up the weights, they do sum up to 1, which is true but how the weights have been calculated that is important. So, if you remember the formula was which I have not written because that has been explained. So, I need weights divided by summation of the weights. So, technically the summation of the weights is 1. So, the non normal weight based on which you want to find out is this and here the mod value will come. Mod value because the case as per Lindner's definition, the total amount of money has to be apportioned into two different sets, sets in the sense some to be invested, some to be used as collateral. Now, if you see these values intuitively they are much more saner, they are much more practical with respect to the value when you consider short selling with the case when Linton's definition is not true. In that case you had about 1700 percentage being short sold or 263 percent being on the long position which looks very interesting but practically they are not feasible because once you default the overall amount for the other person who has is on the other side of the transaction makes a huge loss. Now, if you remember I have been mentioning time and again uh, that the fact that uh, rather than ranking the assets based on excess return to beta, why not do it excess return to sigma? which is the standard deviation. Can we solve the problem? Answer is yes, we can. Next question can be from your side, if you solve the problem, do we get the same answer? My answer from my side would be no, because it may be possible percentage wise the investment may be different, but the ranking of the assets which you are going to do 1 to 5 being positive weight wise 6 to 10 being negative in the short selling sense. That would remain the same, but the overall percentage which you are going to invest from 1 to 5 or 6 to 10 would change. Obviously, keeping in mind the sum of the weights always add, to, add up to 1. You can solve it for the same problem which is already given. Now, we want to use the fact even though I did mention that we are trying to basically rank them based on excess return to sigma. 
a very subtle concept is being considered here that the constant variance covariance matrix is to be used. So, if you consider so leave aside whatever is written there on the slide let us go, go back to the concept of a variance covariance matrix and the point that the word constant variance covariance matrix is utilized. So, if you consider the variance covariance matrix the principal diagonal is the sigma square or the variance and the of the diagonal elements are basically the covariances. So, what we are considering that technically for the covariance values are given as sigma i j rho i j sorry sigma i sigma j. So, all these values of rho i j sigma i j are different based on the asset number i j. But what we are considering is that we will consider the rho value to be fixed, rho value to be fixed. So, rather than take rho i j we will take rho as fixed. So, here what is mentioned because that reduces the amount of calculations. Here we consider that correlation coefficient between asset i and j are always equal and constant. Hence, we use the covariance value between i j as rho without the suffix i and j multiplied by standard deviation of i multiplied by the standard deviation of j. So, those standard deviation of i standard deviation of j calculation I have already considered in detail in the last class or, the, or considering the 11th one and you can utilize that. So, the ranking criterion now is exactly the same which you are considered which is in one case you had excess return minus over r f divided by beta i. So, these are exactly the same that is a sort of efficiency return remains same for both the case risk is now in one case is sigma another case beta we will get the same type of ranking the weights would be different. So, for the case even though it is a repetition please bear with me. So, for the case when without short selling you will consider excess return r i minus r f divided by sigma if it is greater than c star you will include and in the case if r i minus c r f divided by sigma is greater less than c star you would not include that is without the uh, s s or short selling. In case if short selling is there with the s s you will consider that the excess return r i minus r f divided by sigma you will include and in the case when r i minus r f by divided by sigma is less than c star you will include, but with the short selling case. So, if I expand that the answer which you are waiting for yes we will consider short selling to be there the same concept normal definition and the case if short selling is included included you would use the Lindner's definition same concept here weights can be positive weights can be negative and the sum of the normalized weights add up to 1 here also in the case when short selling is allowed Lindner's definition it can be positive it can be negative but with the fact that the non normalized weights mod of that should add up to 1 as the conceptual mathematical solution. We have already solved that, but I just thought I will mention it here. The problem has the condition that short selling not being allowed greater than c star yes less than c star no and riskless lending borrowing being allowed because you are taking the excess return divided by beta or sigma here it is sigma. The rule works as follows 
find the excess return to standard deviation for each stock under consideration and rank them from the highest to the lowest exactly the same thing which you have done for the last three examples. What are the three examples? Short selling not being there, short selling being there, normal de definition, short selling being there, the Linton's definition. You find out the excess return for standard deviation for each stock under the consideration then rank them from the highest to the lowest. The optimum one will consider some of the stocks in the positive sense if it is greater than C star and C star has to be calculated, but in this case rather than beta you are using the concept of sigma which is the standard deviation. And in the case when um, it is less than C star you, you would not consider them that means the values would be 0. and here the weight should be add up to 1 again considering that the normalized weight should add up to 1 here obviously the weight should come out to be 0. Now let us write the formula here we are not considering if you remember there is no mention of sigma square m. So information remains exactly the same as it was there with, with some changes I will come back to these changes late, later on I will highlight it as we discuss. The first column is the stock number, second one is the return RI bar, second is the excess return, third is fourth is basically the standard deviation of the stock because that we are considering as the main measure of risk with respect to the stock rather than the beta. Excess return now it is no more Ri minus Rf divided by beta, but it is more Ri minus Rf divided by sigma. There the sum up is this, and if you remember here, important fact: these rows are not not row ij because they have been replaced by row. That means we are considering constant correlation coefficient existing between the stocks you fat them and find out C, I will come to the fam, uh, formulation of C. But one thing important, again same thing, same concept, the summation which you are doing is j is equal to i to j is equal to 1 to i, when i ch value changes from as you go step by step, you consider the first stock, so it i is equal to 1, you consider 2 stock, i is equal to 2, consider 3 stock, i is equal to 3, so j would be summed up for these three sequences j is equal to 1 to 1, j is equal to 1 to n, uh, 2, j is equal to 1 to 3. Based on that when you find out there would be one C star value as we are mentioning time and again, so it will increase and then decrease. So this 5.25 is the value of C star. So any excess return by sigma greater than 5.25 or C star you will add them in the portfolio in the positive sense and if they are negative you would not add them into, into the portfolio because short selling is not allowed. This C star implies that for all assets in the sense you will be they will be included if C star is, is uh, value is less that means Ri minus Rf is greater than C star and they would not be included if Ri minus Rf is less than C star. So this is due to the fact that short selling is not being allowed. So again repetition please note you are trying to add up j is equal to 1 to i, i is as you go down step by step. So remember one thing the summation is being done from j is equal to 1 to i when short selling not allowed as mentioned here, not allowed and you will consider later on even though I will be repeating it time and again, j is equal to 1 to n when short selling is allowed and then you can have two different formulations of short selling, normal definition. NOR MAL normal definition and Lindner's definition. I will come back to that late, later on. So, with this, I will end the 12th lecture and continue the discussion further on for the case when you have the short selling case with 
normal definition and the Linton definition and then slowly come into the CAPM model and discussion accordingly. Have a nice day and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.